Hey, I've been gone for a minute now. I'm back with the jump off. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Family Table. I know it's been a while, but I'm back. And we're gonna kick this off with a bang and we're gonna be making Guyanese style roti and I'm breaking it down for you step by step. So if you guys just follow me to the kitchen and let's get started. Okay guys, so we're just going to discuss the ingredients and tools in which you need for making the roti uh, just before I show you. So you are going to need some flour and for this recipe I am using 3 cups of plain flour. Now, you can use self-raising flour, but if you are going to use self-raising flour, I will say to omit using any baking powder in the recipe because self-raising flour also have raisin agent. So I'm um, currently in Guyana, so I'm using one of the Guyana brand of uh, plain flour, and I'm going to explain to you why I've let you know about that, and also because with this particular flour, uh, it is the Namilko, and I found that to make roti here, you do not add the baking powder to the flour. But if you are using, if you live outside of Guyana, somewhere in the Caribbean, I would suggest that you use uh, one teaspoon per cup of flour, uh, just so the roti has that nice softness to it and that lift. And now for my people who live in the UK, I know quite a few of you before have tried making roti, but you're like, how is it not coming out? So my tip is what you would need to do is to use a strong white flour or bread flour uh, when making your roti. Uh, it's just that the gluten in that and when you mix it, the, the amount of water, because roti dough you need to mix very soft, so, it, so that to me, it yields the best result. So you cannot use the normal plain flour, the normal self-raising flour. Uh, that's why you might be having issues with the roti in the texture, how it looks, and obviously the soft after a while it becomes a bit more stiff so I would suggest using bread flour or strong white flour if you live in the UK but if you're in other Caribbean islands in America uh, some regular plain flour is fine uh, if you have bread flour available to you, you can also use that if you are in Guyana and you are using the Namilko flour I would, because I purchased the big red bag, I would suggest not using any baking powder whatsoever. But if you are using out of Guyana and using a different brand of flour, uh, suggest one teaspoon of baking powder per cup of flour. And we have three cups of flour here for this recipe. And I have a bit of salt, so we're going to add salt to taste because we still want to have our uh, thing. So this is half a tablespoon of salt in this. I'm still, uh, I know it does seem like a lot of salt, but I'm going to be honest, the salt I'm using is like I got from the UK at one of those discount stores. And if anybody knows, uh, those salt does not have the same, I don't know if it's like sodium content or salt content. It takes a lot more to get any kind of flavor but i'm not going to use all this but i'm just going to add it to taste so i'm going to use half of it so you can use a teaspoon one teaspoon will be fine or just adjust to your taste is clear because what we're going to do also we are going to add a fat so we are going to need fat a fat when making the roti so the fats in which you're going to need uh going to need some oil so I would suggest a neutral oil so whether it's a corn vegetable oil I avoid like those high flavored oils like coconut oil uh, the only non-neutral oil I would suggest if you want to use a little bit of is olive oil because I have tried it with olive oil and it still turns out very nice and it doesn't have that strong taste uh, but I would avoid coconut oil also in mixing this dough uh, i am going to use either a bit of you can use a bit of ghee or you can use butter so i have some ghee with me and it is not this is not a paid advertising video but yes so i'm using this 
umda palka ghee, uh, which is available here, guys. This is like a vegetable ghee. So for people who are vegetarians or vegan, vegetable ghee is an option if you have all butter ghee available to you too. Personally, that's my favorite, but I will be using the vegetable one. Or if you do not have ghee available to you because ghee can be expensive, I do suggest that you either get butter or margarine, uh, which would be very good for you. Uh, so it's very good that you can use this. You can mix it up. It is a lot cheaper than ghee and you can use that. And what we're also going to need is a bit of water for mixing. So I have about a cup and a half of water here. Uh, the amount of water you need will depend on the temperature and the flour brand. Uh, so you might, we'll probably use about half a cup and just go from that out. Because what we want to do is make sure everything is combined together. And also, you would need a rolling pin. Now, if you do not have a rolling pin, see if you can get a glass jar or something in which you can apply a bit of pressure so that you are able to roll the roti in the best way possible. And we need a tawa. So this is a bit seasoned one, uh, which is, you can see it's been very used. Uh, so you can get a tawa or just get, you can get heavy duty frying pan or something which you're able to cook the roti on. So now I'm gonna go over the mixing process and show you guys what we need. Okay, so we're going to start mixing our roti. So at this point, you want to start adding your dry ingredients. So you'll have your flour in a bowl. Uh, you can add the baking powder. Like I said, if you're not in Guyana, using the Namuku brands, like Marion Made and stuff. You add so three cups of flour. So you use three tablespoons of baking powder and not baking soda because baking soda will make you bitter and a horrible aftertaste so baking powder uh, then you will add your salt to taste so we're just going to add a bit of salt to this and what you're going to do we're just going to mix that into the flour sometimes if you're one of those people who like a bit of sweet a little sweetness to your roti you can add a bit of sugar so you can add about half a tablespoon of sugar to this and it'll be fine so I'm just making sure that that bit of salt is mixing well and you just want to get your hands in there and just work it in also now at this point is when you will add the fat so you can use ghee butter i also forgot to mention when i was saying you can also use a bit of shortening uh, but the shortening sometimes you, you got to make sure you do not add too much uh, because th that can cause it to become very crispy after a while and be shortening if it's too much and you don't want it to break up too much but it's still nice and it can give you that flaky aspect so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna add a heap tablespoon of ghee into this flour and I'm just going to use my hands and just work it into the flour at this point. Uh, so now also for people who are living in cold climates like Canada, UK, America, wherever in the Europe, wherever it is that gets really cold. Uh, so during the cold season, just bear in mind when you're using butter and ghee, uh, they do solidify. And that is why sometimes the roti may seem a bit stiff if you have not warmed it. But I found a way in which to help keep the roti soft. And um, so in, and I'll give you that tip also. So now you can see that that ghee has been worked in. You will see, you just want to work it in like if you're creating breadcrumb like texture. It's not that much ghee ghee or butter you're adding that is going to be like fully like breadcrumbs but you just want to work that in and then at this point you're going to start adding the water uh, with the water now you're just going to add a little at a time because what we want is enough water to combine this into a nice soft dough and we're not going to do like bread so you don't you're not going to be doing a lot of kneading so you don't want to knead the flour you just want to make sure that it's all combined 
and you just add little by little. So I have about a cup and a half of water in my jar and we're just gonna use this and just, we're just bringing it together. You just side to side, you're squeezing the dough together so it comes together. So we're not doing any kind of heavy mixing. So mm -hmm. at this point, we're just adding little by little bit of water just so we can combine to get a nice soft dough. And it's coming together. Don't worry at this point if it's starting to feel a bit sticky. You might want to be like, oh my gosh, it's super sticky. I want to add like loads of flour and stuff. No, because if you add too much flour, then is when it will get stiff. So at this point, see, it's just come together. You can see the dough is nice and soft. And we're just gonna add just a little tip more water to this. It's just so we're gonna wet that dough. We still wanna keep this nice and super soft and combined. And there we are. And you can see now, at this moment in time, the dough is looking very sticky and it's sticking to my hands and that's okay because that's what we want you don't want it to be like super stiff like a bread dough but you want this combined you see that dough it's very soft so now what you're going to start doing is just folding it in together and at this point you might be like oh my gosh it's so sticky like this is as you I want you to guys to see you're looking for a nice soft texture as you can see still coming away from the bowl even though it's a bit sticking to my hand because i use my hand for mixing but that's fine so at this point what we're going to do now is i'm going to add a tablespoon of oil to this so that's my secret I add the oil so now for we're just going to add that bit of oil it's a nice tablespoon just add it there and you're just pressing down and we're just gonna get that oil into the dough. So like for what I mentioned, if you live in a cold climate, what the oil does, it keeps the dough soft. That oil adds a bit of softness to that dough. Even so you can see now you're working in that dough and then that oil, it starts to get everything. Like you can see now my hands is basically becoming clean. It's put, allowing all the dough to come together. So press it just. And at this point, we're just gonna give it a quick knead. You don't wanna overwork this dough. It's just so we're combining it and so that oil is well mixed in. And the dough may look a bit shaggy at this point, but I want you guys to see that. Look how soft it is i'm pushing my finger and you'll see it leaves the indentation so this is what we want this nice soft dough so it's not sticky like before if you see i can squeeze it with my hands and you see it's coming because of that oil also the oil gets rid of some of that stickiness as well as add the softness to that and also hope you guys have seen my little Caribbean bowl that I got in the show. It's like so nostalgic that every Caribbean person have these old fashioned bowls back in the day. I just saw it and I couldn't resist. So, but yeah, so what we do is just put that all together. And then now, you see how it looks? We're just going to leave that. And what you're going to do now is just cover this. I'm going to put a bit of cling film over it. Or you can put a towel over it or a damp cloth. Or if you have like a strong paper towel, you just wet it, squeeze out a bit of water, you want to leave it damp and just rest it over the dough. So just avoid the dough from drying out, but also the oil helps it also a bit more to help prevent it from drying out as quickly as it would before, like if you didn't include that oil. So we're just going to leave this for 20, 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, depending on how much I have, let that dough sit, uh, let everything incorporate. Also, if you've added the baking powder, you want to give it time to work and activate. So we're just going to leave this for time to set and you're going to see the difference in the dough after it has set, sat for a while. So we're just going to clean up, cover this down and then I'll show you the second phase. Okay, now we are going to have to oil our roti. So there's a two-step process to oiling, but before that we need to create uh, 
put together what we're going to be using for oil in the roti so you can use oil alone if you would like but for a bit more flavor what i normally do i do a combo so i have ghee and butter uh, so this is about a tablespoon and a half of ghee and the same for the butter and then what i'm going to do with this is you can get in a nice heat proof bowl and you can pop it into the microwave so we're going to add about half a cup of oil to that or you can play around with the mix see whichever you like you can do just the oil alone oil and butter oil and ghee i like the combination mix because to me it adds a bit more oomph uh, into that you can add a bit of shortening also to this because uh, sometimes you do a mixture of the three uh, Normally I mix this in large watch because I'm always making roti and we just gonna all you just need to do is pop this into a Microwave so it uh, it melts down just do like quick short couple seconds burst because you don't want it popping or just put it into a pan put it on the stove and just allow it to heat through or you can do like myself so let's say you do not have access to a microwave so what we're just going to do just going to use a spoon and just start pressing that down and working that in until all of that comes by you'll see gradually the oil starts to change it starts to thicken up as that ghee and that butter starts to break down into it and those flavors things so what you do while the dough is sitting you start mixing this together so that you have that and you guys can already see I've not completed this yet how that crystal air clear oil color just started changing and then we do so what I'm gonna do now is just finish this just just mix it all together and you're good this to oil that roti okay okay so we've let the dough sit for about 30 minutes and now I want you to look at the difference so now that's uh, just gonna give this a nice quick knee just bring in the size and I want you guys to see how nice and soft that is and how much it is stretching it's like an all new complete knee new dough Okay, we're just bringing it all together and now you can see look at how smooth and nice that dough is and it's still soft and also because we're mixing that oil it is not sticky just want you to see mm -hmm. so now at this point what we're just going to do is to lightly dust this Okay, just gonna continue, just dust this a little flour as we bring it all together. So it is not as sticky as before, but now we're just gonna get rid of any excess stickiness and that dough comes together very lovely. Okay. So now at this point, what we're gonna do is just to divide these into some balls uh, so we're gonna start making the roti but what we're just gonna do is just gonna divide the dough up so this dough is pretty much gonna get me about six rotis so we're just gonna just gonna cut that up So you can get a bit more, it just depends on the size in which you want. And at this point, what we're just gonna do is just gonna bring that all together from the different sides and we're just gonna form this into a nice ball. And you wanna make sure that your counter space is clean and you can also just put that on a plate. So see him just come in. And because the dough is pretty nice and soft, easy to work with, we're pulling all the sides together. As you can see. And look, we're just forming it into balls at the moment. And we do that once more. Just 
we're going to simply pull and stretch from the end, just slightly rotate, and we're just going to turn them into some nice dough balls at the moment. Okay, so we've made these into just separate them. Uh, like I said, you can get a bit more depending on how big or how thick you'd like your rotis. So I've just divided this into six pieces. So I'm just going to get six rotis. So now at this step is where we're going to do the first oiling process and what this also does it creates the layer for the roti so now what you're going to need is your bowl a bit of extra flour for dusting and rolling and that oil mixture that i showed you guys that we created earlier so we're going to be using this and at this stage you have either a pastry brush or you can use a spoon to do this and you can use a spoon to do this and now i'll show you the next so at this point i've just lightly floured my surface and my rolling pin and what we're going to do is we're going to take one of those little balls and we're just going to roll this out so I don't want you guys to concentrate about shape or anything at this moment in time. We are just creating the layers. So we're just going to roll this out a bit. And you'll see the dough, it stretches because it's so soft. And we're just going to roll it out a bit. Not rolling it out too thin because we're not cooking the rotis yet. So we just create that. So now that you've done that, at this stage now, what we're going to do, you want to take a bit of the oil mixture. So this is with the butter, the ghee, and the oil that we've done. And we're just going to add a blight to it, just evenly spread it out. You don't want to add too much, but you just want to add enough that when we put it all together, we'll have that layered process. So now that you've done that, what you can leave it this way, or what you can also do now is just sprinkle a bit of flour on it. So what the flour will do, it will soak up any excess oil, but it will also help to keep the layers a bit separated once you have rolled that. So just sprinkle on a bit of flour. I won't add on too much, just a little bit. And what you're going to do, you're going to create a line with your knife here, you'll cut from the center straight to the end and you see that and we're just going to roll this up so what you're going to do is just fold and hold this bit and you fold and you're just going to keep folding that while trying to keep it in line with the circle and that is just going around and at this point we take the bottom bit and you tuck it into the bottom and then we take the outer layer, the edges, and we just pull that in. And then you take the tip and you put that down. You can tip now, take your finger, a bit of that oil mixture, and you just press that down. And voila. If you look at it. So, and how you get that. So I'll do one more to show you guys how we get that done. So we're gonna go back again. You wanna flour your rolling pin and apply a little bit of flour to the surface. And now here we go, we add that dough ball and it's just gonna roll. So the flour is gonna prevent it from sticking because remember it's very soft though. And you roll. And we're not rolling this very thin. It's just so we stretch out the dough enough by a few inches. And now you apply the oil again. And you apply enough so all of the surface is covered. So you can see all of that has a bit of oil on it and now we just add the bit of flour like i said so we soak up that excess oil and keep the layers apart and we're not adding too much flour to that just a light dusting 
and then you go from the center straight down to the end and you hold the tip and you fold and you're just going around so you can create as much layers as you can and we're trying to keep it in line with the outer layer so you're gonna have to just try and control it a bit a little practice makes perfect and then when you get to the end you hold that edge you pull it and you stick it right in the middle and then we just pull the outer layers and we fold them in and we push the top right down the center tip our fingers in that oil mixture you press that down and here you go look at how beautiful that is and how easy that is so I'm just gonna finish up the rest now and then I'll take you guys through the other stages okay so I finished doing all the rest as you can see so just have them on a plate here so what you want to do now is just cover these uh, so you can use a damp towel paper towel just like when we were covering the initial mix or some cling film uh, just to keep it from the dough from drying out because you do have that flour on it and then it's going to be exposed to the air and now that it's done I'll show you how we roll out the roti okay so I'm going to roll out the roti now so you just need a bit of extra flour uh, so I've done the surfaces and the rolling pin uh, so what I normally would do is just to take the roti and just gonna put it into a bit of flour and just press that down a bit so what this does because uh, we did add that oil and while we're rolling it out uh, if any oil is to come through from the crease or anything that also helps to keep it all together avoid the counter from being super oily and sticky uh, so now what you're just going to do you just want to apply a bit of pressure and you're just going to do back and forth motion or you can do halfway and turn uh, and turn you just keep rotating it uh, it just depends and in that method you'll get a perfect round roti but at this point i want to show you guys kind of often time a lot of people are concerned about whether or not their roti is round and the shape if this is your first time making i will advise you do not get caught up in the shape you just need to master the flavor and the softness because roti is one of those things the more you make it the better you get so we're just going to roll that out we're just going to stretch the dough and we are twisting it so you can keep it in a round shape and you want to apply pressure and this will also depend on how thick or how thin you want the roti some people like the roti very thick and some like it very thin i prefer a thinner roti than one that's super thick and also bear in mind because you've added the baking powder to the dough that dough is gonna rise once you start to cook so we're just gonna roll that out and if you see how that stretches so and as you can see so it's coming together very nicely and you want to rotate it for that round circular shape but I'm just going to do some which aren't fully round just to show you that it doesn't make a difference you just want to make sure you have that taste so you just want to roll it out so and then we're going to cook this on the tower so just want you to see and that's pretty much round I'll do a next one and show you again okay and we're going to do the next one to show you like I said it's a bit of flour you dust that pin or that bottle whatever you're using so it's to help so it doesn't stick and you see we get just a lightly flowered surface and we're going to get the next one of these and like I said we're just going to add it to that flour and you're just going to roll and rotate roll and rotate so it keeps at least a circular shape 
and so you get to stretch that dough and you can just flip it over and just continue rolling until you get to the desired size and shape that you want and it's pretty much easy so while you're doing this uh, you put your pan in which you will be cooking in so whether you have a towel or a frying pan you want to try and make sure you get a nice thick pan or cast iron pan something that will basically conduct heat spread heat evenly because uh, you don't want to use something that's super thin because then you're going to run the risk of burning the roti you're burning the flour and as you can see so this the recipe you can get about six medium to large roti depending on the thickness and like I said for me this is relatively fine uh, you can do this a bit more and you see we have a nice round roti shape and there you go so I'm gonna roll out the rest and cook and show you guys okay so my pan's towel is currently on the stove heating up uh, what you're gonna do we're gonna cook it at, with a, a low to medium heat high heat uh, so you don't want to heat too high, you don't want it too low, uh, just to make so you can adjust as you go along. I am using a gas cooker, uh, I can vary when using electric. But also what I want you to do is just get a bowl for putting the roti in and just get a nice clean towel to line it or you can also use paper towel. If you do live in a colder climate, I suggest get a towel so when you rest the roti in you can cover it and uh, that will allow it to keep a lot softer locking a lot of that steam um, also you need to get yourself a, a spatula see any type can work uh, just for flipping the roti while cooking and at this point if you're making roti that you're going to be wrapping for those of you who are going to be selling and you're going to be wrapping the roti and curry uh, you can skip this next stage I'm about to mention uh, just because it's better for holding the roti but if you're going to be selling it and have the curry on the side and you want that traditional uh, Guyanese roti uh, what you need to do is you'll need to clap the roti or shake it so what that's going to do is to help make it a lot more flaky and it may helps to make it softer and give you that nice lovely texture uh, the old-fashioned way is we'll clap that roti so we're folding and use our hands I'll show you how to do that or you can get yourself a mug or a bowl something that's nice that you can put a tight lid on and we're gonna shake it for a bit and I'll show you both so you can see the consistency and how it looks uh, I currently now use a mug instead of and just shake it instead of clapping uh, just because well I don't want to hear my mom complaining about my hands in the heat and obviously they say over a period of time when you get older the hot and the cold it does affect you and your joints but I'll show you that you can use whichever is easiest to you and also when you shake it you're not handling all of that heat okay so the tower has been heating up and at this point what I do some people choose to oil the pan I chose I do not oil the pan right away so I have the roti and we're just gonna spread that out on the tower itself so if when moving it it comes out of shape you can adjust it on that tower and if you have a look you can see because the tower is nice and heated you can already see that that is cooking now how long you decide to cook it will be your preference on how crispy or how brown you like the roti uh, so when i see this color change as you guys can already see because uh, this cooks pretty quickly what i do now at this point is i flip the dough over so it's not done as yet so as you can see now the oil mixture I'm showing you so this will be the second time in which you oil in the roti uh, so if you have a brush you can just brush it or if you have a heavy duty spoon I would say like a heavy spoon or something that you'll be comfortable in spreading oil and what you want to do is to spread oil 
evenly across the roti surface. What this does, it not only allows with the flavor, it helps to keep that roti nice and soft. So if you want to make like wraps, you can omit the oil and it'll be more of a drier texture. Uh, so now as you see, we flip this back over and now you can see that roti starts to swell. Uh, so, and we allow it to cook some more on the opposite end with that oil and now we're gonna oil this side so we complete the process. So normally if you're doing this with a spoon, if you want to have it swelling you just need to be gentle because sometimes you can bore it but don't worry about that and as you can see that lovely color that we have in here and depends if you want it like this some people like it a lot more browner some people do not and now we're just gonna take this off the fire because that's pretty much done we only need to about cook it about 40 to what 40 seconds to a minute on each side as we flip because as you can see now it is brown with that oil and that's completely cooked and if you look Currently, you can already see that layer there from the roti. So we're just gonna take this off and then I'll show you what we do. Okay now, so at this point, so we're gonna do the clapping. You just want to fold this in half. Uh, this is pretty hot and just gonna lift it up and you're just gonna use your hands and just, just clap on both ends. And you can see how flaky and nice because those layers so now just a few and I will show you this is extremely hot you can see how it's basically come apart all those layers that we have there so I'm just gonna fold this and we're gonna cover that with the towel and now we're just gonna continue cooking the rest of the roti Okay now, so I've got a second one, put that in the mug and what we're going to do, you just want to cover that tightly and you're just going to shake it uh, so it doesn't take long, just give it a good shake and I'm just going to pour that out and if you guys see, look at how nice and lovely that also is so these are still super hot and flaky and remember I said if you're selling, you know, thing is we're just going to cover that and I'm going to finish them up and show you how it all comes together. Okay, so the rotis are just finished cooking, so I have them in the towel. So I'm just going to show you guys quickly what they look like. And you can see, have a look at that. I'm going to plate this up for you guys, but I want you to see how nice and loose and flaky that is. And you can see how that is there. So, and they're still super soft. And see nice and round so if you're gonna be wrapping them and I'm just gonna plate these up for you guys so that you can see what them look once plated but these are so soft and they smell so lovely guys I wish you guys could have smelled this through a video but when you make your own you'll be able to see this is wonderful okay guys so this is the final product so we have the roti here and just serve it alongside some curry and you can enjoy this with anything you like you can eat this just like this you can have it with a bit of curry a bit of brown stew tomato stew corned beef it is we normally eat it with lots of different things here in Guyana but I know a lot of people just traditionally is the roti and curry and just gonna break this for you guys so that you guys can see how nice and soft and you can see the layers from when we made those layers how nice and look how soft that is mm. see it just comes apart lovely 
Now look at that. It's pretty good and you just use that. Enjoy your curry and everything. And I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. And please make sure you hit the thumbs up button on this video. Make sure you like and also subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed to the channel as yet because I will be making a lot more amazing recipes for you guys. Uh, also don't forget to just leave a comment tell me what you think about the recipe. Also just leave a comment and let me know what else you'd like for me to make for you and kindly share the video on all social media platforms so everyone can join in on the fun. And do enjoy the rest of your day guys and this is your boy Kieran signing out. Goodbye.